Oh yeah. <laughs> She's getting long. It's time to bring out an old friend. My Land Pride FDR 1660 finish mower. She's been sitting back here in the shed since 2019. I think she needs a little TLC. We're gonna start the season off right this year. I'm gonna do the full maintenance on that mower before I fire it up for the first time. They're really simple to maintain. A lot of grease circs, check on the belt, and we need to pull those blades off and get them sharpened up. And for that, we're gonna take it over to Guy's Workshop. Hope you'll stick around today. Cheers. All right, Mr. Grease Gun, you're up. First, we're gonna start with the spindles and the casters. On these Land Pride units, you're gonna find a grease circ on each one of the four spindles, and you're also gonna find underneath, if you wipe clean enough, the bearings on each caster also have a grease circ. We're not done yet. On your belt system here, you're gonna find three grease circs, one on each end spool and one right in the middle down through the middle of that piece of metal. In the manual, it talks about checking the tension of this belt. I don't have one of those proper tools to measure it, but they said basically you need to be able to put about seven to 10 pounds of pressure and you should only be able to push the belt about a quarter inch with that type of pressure. I'm gonna have to wing it. What it does warn you in the manual is not to over tighten because they said it'll cause early wear or damage to some of your, your spindles or your pulleys. You're gonna do that test measurement on this part of the belt right about here. And for me, that seems pretty tight. Next up, we're just gonna check the level in the gearbox. You'll see there's a side bolt that you can remove or you'll have the dipstick right here on top. It's a vented dipstick, that's why it looks a little odd. Either way, it takes a 19 millimeter socket and if you do need to fill, you can grab this at your Kubota dealer, it's 80W90 and you fill in the top if you need any. Make sure you remove the bolt in the side once the oil gets to the point of reaching the hole and starts to drip out, that's when you know you have enough. There's your dipstick. You see there's a min and a max mark on it. Drop it down, screw in but don't tighten. See how we're doing here. It's kind of clear, just like the hydraulic fluid. It's kind of hard to see, but I think we're in good shape. I couldn't find a torque value to put this back, so I'm just going to firm it up as best I can without stripping it. And lastly, you're gonna do your PTO shaft, just like you would any other attachment. You wanna make sure you get the crosshairs with that grease circ. You also wanna clean out the spline, put a little grease in there. On this particular PTO, I have this ring style. I'm not a big fan of them, but that's what it comes with. So you wanna get a little grease in there as well. And don't forget, pull your shaft apart, get a little grease on here so you've got something inside as well. Just a light coating is all you need. Careful not to cut your fingers in case they're a little sharp. This spline is already really well greased. Don't need to do anything with that. Remember that one end goes to the tractor, the other one goes to the implement. Oh, 
Always listen for that click. It's a pretty exciting day today for me and the girls. The goslings finally hatched and came out of the nest. We're getting a little worried. Bobby's got some geese nested over on his shore and they hatched a couple of weeks ago. I thought maybe somebody got into the nest. Five of them. Be a good year. I prefer using tree straps instead of chains. It doesn't scratch the paint. You can see I changed my mind. I ended up putting the straps right on the lower lift arm brackets. Got a much better angle or height out of it. And remember, don't forget to put something under your loader arms before you crawl under. This model's got three blades on it, and it also comes with four different optional blades. Either the standard middle lift, as I've got, or medium lift. It's got a low lift, a high lift, and it also has mulching blades that you can purchase for this unit. As I said, I just got the medium lift that came with it. Although the manual says there's a half inch bolt holding those blades on, it's actually a 19 millimeter. See if the old impact wrench will take them off. Here we go. Aye, oh, there's always one. I don't know what we ever did before WD-40. Just couldn't get those to budge at all. Sprayed them up, left it for about an hour, went back at it with the impact gun. Blades are not looking too bad. There's a couple of chunks out of a few ends, but in all fairness, I've hit a few rocks up here, as you know. Let's head over to Guy's workshop, see if he'll help us grind these down, get them sharpened up, throw her back together, and we'll be ready for mowing. Okay, three steps here at Guy's workshop. We're just gonna use the wire brush, try to get off some of this surface rust and some of the crud off of these blades. Then we're gonna grind them. Manual says that you want a 30 degree cutting edge. So we're gonna take a grinder to these. And then last step, we need to balance the blade just to make sure that we're not weighted too far one way or the other. Let's do it. Ah, not too bad. Now the other side. This guy's in great shape. Okay, maybe not so much. <laughs> this guy's gonna need a little bit of work. How are we doing on this one? Nice, nice edge on that. Oh, nice edge on this one. Okay, great. And this one, nice edge again. Excellent. And mm, not so much. Kind of interesting how on both this one and this one, these sides look like they hit a few too many rocks. But the other side of the blades seem to be okay. All right, let's get the grinder. I think the toughest part for me is gonna be trying to maintain that 30 degrees here. But we'll see, do the best I can anyways.
I think that works. By the way, the manual is going to ask you to balance it this way, horizontally, off of a pin or a nail or a pencil or whatever you've got. And as you can see, still doing good. Just a quick note, I got onto my third blade here. The other two were reasonably balanced. They sat pretty, pretty easy. This one here kept falling off to one side. Clearly too heavy on one side. And obviously on this side here, I've taken a couple of good chunks out of it. Probably going to be the last season for these blades. But what I did to try to balance it or remove weight is I did not go against the cutting edge and try to grind more off. I actually took it off the back of the wing because I don't think that matters. I could be wrong, but I don't believe it does. So I just ground a little bit off of the back, put her back on and she was nice and balanced. Alrighty. Remember this spacer is gonna go against the head of the bolt, so your blade is going to go through, and then you're going to want to start the thread with your fingers, if you're not sure which way they go on, take a picture before you take them off, but either way, you don't want this you to be down, you want it up. I've snugged them up with the impact gun. Last thing to do, 75 foot pounds according to the manual on these bolts. And then we're done. Probably gonna want a piece of wood or something in here to help lock it in for you. There we go. That's a wrap. Mower's all ready for action. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a new set of blades come the end of this season or for next season. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you wanna know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful and safe week with your families. Please be kind to one another. I'll see you again right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers. <laughs>